Hey everybody, and welcome back to FSI DFS. I am McKinley412. Uh, you can probably tell by my voice, I've been a little bit under the weather here. Um, I haven't had a voice this low in quite some time. Uh, hopefully I can make it through. I don't know. The throat's hurting. So uh, what we'll do is we'll just break down the pitchers, break down stacks, uh, the, the usual. You, you guys know the deal by now. Um, so up in this top tier, Scherzer, Walker, Steele, and Lauer, the guys above 9K. Steele is going to be the guy that stands out the most to me. Uh, he's probably going to be the first guy that's going to be in my lineups, uh, especially in cash games. 9.7K, just a phenomenal start to the season. He's kind of proven that you know he can provide a floor as well as giving us some upside. Uh, so I do love Steele at 9.7K. Uh, Scherzer, like, amazing pitcher. We know this. We know his ceiling, his strikeout rate, um, all that kind of stuff. But when you take into account, you know, he, he has admittedly struggled a little bit uh, to start the season. He's got a tougher matchup going up against the Dodgers. Dodgers have struggled this season. I think they're eight and nine at the record at the start of this video. They, they didn't score more than two runs against Chicago the whole series. Uh, but like combine all those things and then uh, 10.8 K I think I'd rather take steel uh, and the 1,100 savings just because I mean, I, th I think the savings are going to be important just because there's not like we've seen prices have already ballooned uh, and skyrocketed uh, since the start of the season. So like the value is getting tougher to find. Um, and then we have a Coors game, but the Coors game, you know, they didn't really price up uh, Pittsburgh. So, We'll see. Uh, but still, I think Scherzer's number two. Walker and Lauer, uh, I don't really have too much interest in them. I have them over here, but they could be over here in the no interest category. They just don't have enough high enough K rate for me to get excited uh, about them at their salary price points. Like Walker at 9.9K with his strikeout rate, you know, over the you know last season. <clears throat> And even like the start of this season, I just don't have any interest in that um, at that price tag. Lauer 9-2, kind of the same thing. You know, he, he's there. If you want to jam him in to get a little bit different, sure, that's fine. Uh, but I, I don't think he's going to be winning you a GPP at all. Uh, going into this mid-tier, uh, I did include Cobb in this mid-tier at 7.7K. Just because like when I go through, like I just kind of filter them through. And then um, like when guys like uh, Quantro and Gonzalez go over into the no interest category, you know, lowers down the list you, you get it hopefully hopefully i'm making sense i got no idea i can't really think um but Cobb's gonna be my number one guy because you're you're not just you gotta remember in dfs you're not just uh you're not thinking about the matchup that the guy is specifically in you're also trying to you know project the ownership and see you know okay who is he similar uh price point to so like we got a guy like clevenger right above him clevenger low strikeout rate high walk rate um tougher matchup going up against philly so i'll take cobb over clevenger gonzalez going up against milwaukee milwaukee they've been doing great uh so far this season with their bats but another guy with a low strikeout rate so i don't have too much interest in gonzalez quantrill talking about guys with low strikeout rates Quantrill's probably got the lowest of all of them he's in a decent matchup going up against detroit uh but i still will take cobb uh six hundred dollars cheaper in a nice matchup going up against Miami and their weak offense. So I do think Cobb is going to be my favorite guy um, in in this mid-tier. Rodgers, more in following him. Clevenger, he's there. He he just needs to figure out the walks. Um, like, he's got the, the K rate at times. Um, overall, it's not super high. Uh, but really, it's, it's the walks. It's the control issues that he's been having. That's, like, the main concern with him. Um, at this point. So I don't want to say like fade him or anything um, just because like if he can control the walks like he could be a decent play. And he's a right-handed pitcher going up against Philadelphia and Philadelphia has been striking out quite a bit against right-handed pitching uh, to start the season. Well, we talked about that in a previous video. So going into the low tier, uh, Perez, Oviedo, um, really those are the two guys. Uh, center guard don't have too much interest in. Singer, especially, uh, no one not too much interest in either uh, going up against Texas, especially if it's going to be like 20 to 25 mile an hour winds blowing out like it's projected. Uh, probably won't have too much interest in him. But Perez, you know, he's probably the one guy that stands out uh, at the bottom guys here. A uh, nice matchup going up against KC. But again, if it's 20 plus mile an hour winds blowing out, I don't know. I don't know. It could be a little dicey, but we'll have to see. You know, Kansas City, while they don't have the greatest offense, I feel like a lot of their bats do have some pop in them uh, as you kind of go through the lineup. So 
but still, good. compared to everybody else, I think that he's probably my favorite. Oviedo, he's had an incredible start uh, to start the season, but you know, still three starts. I don't think it's enough data. Uh, we, I'm still looking at previous seasons data as well. Uh, but I mean, he's fine. The main issue here, obviously, he's he's in Coors Field. Um, nobody ever likes to pitch in Coors Field, so. A little bit of a drawback on him, but if you do want to go with him in like a GBP, I, I wouldn't mind him uh, in that regard there. So let's just turn towards the bats. Everybody else is just kind of a fade for me at this point, or I just don't have too much interest. Pittsburgh, uh, they're going to be my favorite stack on this slate. Uh, not just because they're in Coors Field. Um, I mean, that definitely gets taken into account, and they're going up against Gomber, who, you know, really struggling. But uh, DK did not price them up, really, at all in terms of salary. So, like, if you did want to jam in, like, two top-tier pitchers, so say well, you go with Steele and you go with Scherzer. Say you just go all out uh, at pitcher. Pittsburgh, very affordable. Outside of Brian Reynolds at five at six two and McCutcheon at five two, you're already down to four two remaining for the rest of your guys. So um, I was looking at you know what's the typical Pittsburgh lineup against left-handed pitchers, and they've had the same lineup against left-handed pitchers the past three starts. Um, so it was with Cabrian Hayes uh, batting leadoff, and now you're talking about uh, Reynolds, McCutcheon, Santana, uh, Castro's right there. Um, Joe, uh, Joe, maybe Joe was up higher. I can't remember, but like these guys are affordable, much more affordable than other teams who I have a lot of interest in. Like I really like St. Louis going up against Bumgarner, who is a shell of himself at this point. But you look at their price tags, you're at five, eight, five, four, four, three, and it's a handful of guys at 4k and above. So it's one, two, uh, Donovan's in three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine. I can't count. Uh, but still, there, there's not much value there. Um, St. Louis does have a lot of lefties. Uh, really, where their offense has come from has been their lefties so far this season. Uh, St. Louis is what I mean. So, like, if you do want to go with the lefty-righty splits, uh, platoon splits against Bumgarner, uh, Goldschmidt, for sure. You know, he's had a slower start to the season in terms of his uh, numbers and everything. But guys like... Um, where he's, oh, here we go. O'Neal, he's he's really struggling so far this season. Um, Carlson, very much struggling so far this season. So St. Louis, while I do love the matchup going up against Bob Garner, uh, I think just like with the price points and everything else, I do have them ranked below uh, Pittsburgh. Chicago Cubs going up against Oakland. We don't know Oakland starter yet. Uh, we could just see the Oakland bullpen. Who knows uh, at this point, uh, but I, I do Chicago. They've been a fun team to watch a uh, guy like Horner. He actually leads the league in stolen bases uh, so far this season. So always going to have interest in stolen bases um, just because with, you know, how much more frequent they have been this year. Um, they're just so much more important to DFS, uh, obviously. So Horner is leading the league and so on bases. You can see he's averaging 11 DK. He's hitting over 330. Uh, he's just been doing phenomenal. So he's, he's seeing the ball really well. And when he is on the base paths, he is stealing bases. So if you want to go with like a Horner one-off, like awesome. I think that'd be fantastic. Um, and 4.2K, very, very affordable. Boston Bats in general, kind of expensive kind of, they're they're expensive and cheap at the same time <coughs> excuse me i need some water <laughs> they're expensive and cheap at the same time a uh, couple guys at 5k but then like not really anybody in that you know mid salary range so i do like chicago going up against oakland and speaking of stolen bases being so important um who was it who was it the met oh Marte. i want to talk about Marte for the mets um going up against Syndergaard. sorry i'm struggling here there we go going up against Syndergaard. uh Syndergaard has just had a constant issue of holding base runners um and it's happened last season uh and it's continuing on this season as well um, he's had three starts and I was looking through, he's already had seven guys steal successfully on him, um, in just those three games. And then that's just when he's pitching, that's not even including the, the Dodgers bullpen, um, and everything. So, uh, let's just take a look here. I'm curious. Okay. So 16 innings pitched, he's allowed seven stolen bases. So he's allowing 
almost a stolen base every uh, two innings. So I have a lot of interest in uh, the New York Mets uh, speedy guys. So it's Toronto Marte. He's leading the team uh, on stolen bases. So 5.5K. It's a bit pricey. Uh, if you want to go with him as like a one-off in a GPP, you could do that. Uh, that'd be fine. Uh, but you can kind of see quickly, like as I, as you jam in like Steel and Scherzer, as soon as you put in like one big uh, 5K plus guy, I'm already down to 3K and lower remaining. And that's still, I still need a first baseman and everything. So probably won't be going Marte. Uh, but I just do want to talk about that real quick. Uh, Cleveland, I do think they're nice going up against Turnbull. Uh, Turnbull shut down Toronto last start out, which was extremely frustrating. Uh, but he's still recovering from injury. I expect a slow start from him this season. He's not the greatest pitcher uh, in the first place. And Cleveland, you know, they can provide some of that value for you. So maybe you want to go with a guy like Josh Bell at uh, 3.9K. Maybe he's a, for, a cheap uh, first baseman that you can go to. Uh, if Arias is batting up in the lineup, I know he's been struggling hard so far this season, but anytime that you can, you know, get that opportunity of, of batting high in the order, you got to have some interest in them. Um, and then Cleveland, like they're, I mentioned it in previous uh, videos, but Cleveland is a team. They're not going to be hitting a home run balls constantly. Um, they're a small ball team. They're going to be a team that's hitting, you know, singles and doubles and then stealing bases. Like that's just how they go. Um, so I do like Cleveland in that regard. And because, you know, they're not hitting a lot of home runs, it kind of suppresses uh, their salary. So I think Cleveland could be an interesting team. Um, Atlanta, GPP, uh, you can kind of almost flip-flop Atlanta and St. Louis. Atlanta's going up against Martinez. He allows a lot of contact. Doesn't really strike out many guys. Uh, so, but the prices for Atlanta are way up there. So uh, they're kind of in that GPP category for me. Colorado uh, going up against Oviedo. Mentioned how you know he's had a great start to the season. Could be a little... Um, could see some higher ownership uh, just because of that, just because of people trying to find uh, cheaper salary um, and whatnot, but who knows. But, uh, oh, Arizona. Really wanted to talk about Arizona. How did I forget about them? I'm glad I didn't. Uh, Arizona, they're cheap. These guys are affordable. Um, and, sorry, that's my phone. Um, these guys are cheap, they're affordable, and they're in a great spot going up against Woodford. Woodford cannot generate any uh swinging strikes like he can't yeah you know what that means um so i have a lot of interest in the arizona guys guys like corbin carroll carroll's a fantastic guy looks like once he gets on base he's taking off he's gonna be stealing uh one of the fastest guys in the league just a fun fun guy i think his team in general is just fun to follow um at this point in time so i do think arizona can provide some some nice value for you if you do want to throw in some of these guys but you can kind of see okay so maybe it's not too bad steel scherzer horner carroll and then hayes and joe you, you could certainly uh, build a nice lineup uh, around that there i'm not saying this is a core by any means you know i want to see what lineups come out i want to do some more uh research i do these the night before so it's kind of just like preliminary research and everything uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't mind that at all. Uh, Horner with his crazy stolen base upside with how well he's doing against Oakland and that cheap price tag, Carroll, same thing. It's going to be taken off, uh, like crazy. And then Pittsburgh. Uh, yeah. Hey, we made it. We made it somehow. Uh, only one water break. So hopefully, uh, this video was helpful for you guys. Hopefully, um, kind of steers you in the right direction. So as always, thanks for watching. Pay attention to the weather. Good luck in your contests and we will see you in the next video.